had a realization while editing my last video. I simply cannot go on. After 34 consecutive weeks of editing, brainstorming, executing videos, and having a fucking blast, I'm very overstimulated and it's time for a break. What now? Existential crisis? Kind of, yeah. It's good to see you guys. It's been a couple of weeks since I picked up my camera. I slept so good. Rolling out of bed at 10.45. It's Labor Day, by the way. So I don't feel bad about it. If you're new to my videos, hi, my name's Chelsea. I'm in my 30s and I live alone here in New York City with my two cats and I just vlog about it. No, but I like to emphasize in my vlogs the parts of my life that aren't as glamorous to try and normalize the messy parts of life. I think social media could use more of that. And yeah, now I'm nearing the end of my first full year of being a content creator full time and it has been a wild ride. A wild ride. <laughs> no. Where is, I don't even know where my phone is. Where's my, it's right there. But I haven't even checked it because I haven't had Instagram now since Thursday. I think it's when I deleted it off my phone and today's Monday. I mean, while I feel like it was my way of being social, I definitely feel a bit more isolated here without social media. It does feel like I have a bit of a, a new brain. I don't even feel anxious right now, which is great. It's because I haven't had my coffee yet. I picked up a map. I don't have any phone. So after the last couple days of unplugging, I feel like I've been waiting for the urge to pick up my camera again to start vlogging my life. And But it just wasn't happening. And I was starting to wonder if maybe I'm not ready to come back to YouTube just yet. When we stop creating and we zoom out, we might realize that the path that we initially set out upon isn't the path that we still want to be on. And that's okay. You need the space and time to let yourself, your thoughts, your ideas, your creativity. You need time and space to let those breathe away from your own judgments on those things and away from other people's opinions. I spent a large chunk of my weekend kind of reconnecting with my basic human needs that I'm really bad at doing, unfortunately, like remembering to drink water, to leave the house every day, to move my body at least once a day, to meditate and to journal. It takes a lot of energy to remember to do all of these things. How do people do this every day? So now this is the first thing I'm gonna focus on when I'm taking this time off. There's a lot of people out at Central Park right now. In this break, I've been pretty secluded in my own little, my own little world kind of indoors. It's my preferred place. <laughs> I forget like how good it feels just to be around other people, even if I don't actually talk to them, you know. A better spot just opened up on the lawn. I'm wondering if I should go take it, but I'm sitting on a pile of acorns right now. <laughs> it's massaging out some knots in my butt. Well, I brought my journal and my book, two things that I've been doing these last couple days uh, quite a bit. I've been journaling more than I've been reading. Now that I'm outside and can just like can breathe fresh air. Oh, that's been a weird part about taking time off of vlogging is that I'm not figuring out in my head how I'm gonna make what I'm doing into a video. It's always been my mission to create videos around my life and not make my life around my videos, but I'll admit it's kind of hard for it to stay within that boundary. And I think I lost that a little bit. I can do better, <laughs> you know? When it starts to feel so curated, I think that's when I get a little bit burnt out, even if that's not my intention. Oh, there's someone else here with a camera set up. Oh, that's really nice. I'm not the only one. <laughs> I still feel awkward filming in public. It's not as bad as it used to be, but... <laughs>
perfect day. Ooh, acorns everywhere. Let's go get some groceries. I feel like a good dinner tonight. I also spent another large chunk of my time going down YouTube rabbit holes. Oh my gosh. And it led to some really interesting places. I started to find creators on this platform that really opened my eyes to the kind of storytelling that I wanna do, that I wanna learn how to do, that I have no idea how to do yet, but I wanna learn how to do that. I was really finding a lot of inspiration from Natalie Lynn, Isabel Page, Life of Riza, Colt Kerwan, Gox Art. I was really trying to absorb their individual styles, the music they chose, the color grading, the effects, the lengths that these creators would go to get the shot, the world that they create, that they invite us into. I mean, forgive me while I'm geeking out here, but these creators do so much more than just make videos on YouTube for some money. You can feel the amount of soul that they put into their videos and it, it's true filmmaking. And it's very special when you find a piece of art that helps you better understand yourself. This is the kind of creation that I left my job to do. I just didn't know it yet. I used to have a large bowl that I can no longer use now because <laughs> I caught a roach with it. A really, a really big roach. And I taped it to a cardboard box to take it downstairs outside to release it. And now I just have the bowl for the next roach. I'm never eating out of that bowl again. I don't know, I don't have anything like salad sides anymore. Darn it. You know, after some reflecting, I realized like, I don't wanna sell a lifestyle. Like if you watch my vlogs, my life's kind of boring, but it got me seriously thinking about the value that I want people to get from my channel. So I tried to get really clear on what I wanted that to be. It's really good. The first thing, I want people to leave my videos feeling a little less alone in the world, almost like they're getting a hug from a friend by the end of the video. The second thing is, is I, I want each video to leave people feeling inspired by their own lives. Even someone's basic day to day can really tell a story, just you know, depends how you wanna package it. I want people to feel entertained and uplifted by that. And the third thing is, is because I have a vlog channel, I want people to learn something new about me and about themselves from each video. And if I achieve all of those points in my video, then that is my definition of success. Gordo! Don't you dare touch it. Deli. Don't you dare back away. Back away. Deli, no. Deli. No. She's right above you now. The long nights, the brighter stars, and ask ourselves how we're feeling. So I actually had a whole separate section of this video giving my tips for working through a creative crisis, but I deleted all of that because I'm like, I don't actually know. I didn't have the urge to pick up my camera when I started to make this video, but I, I slowly got momentum throughout the process of creating it. So I guess that is something I can share to maybe help you if you're also feeling stuck. It's possible the elusive spark may never find you, but I doubt all artists feel inspired and motivated every day, but they still show up to create something even if it's total shit. So I guess that's discipline and we can exercise discipline by doing some of the things that I'm doing in this video, building the discipline to maintain these habits of like just taking care of myself. It's just as basic as that because it's exercising that same muscle of just showing up, getting the habit of showing up, whatever you're showing up for. So I just hope this video reached someone who needed to hear that art does not have to be perfect to be worthy of being seen. <laughs> you guys. So yeah, my break was only a week. <laughs> Making a whole video highlighting that probably seems excessive, but it felt like a turning point to me that I wanted to emphasize. It's kind of like I'm renewing my vows to YouTube, if you will. But also I've felt quite a bit of pressure to have something else going on outside of 
YouTube in my life. Mostly this pressure comes from myself. I think it's a good idea to have other things going on in my life for my mental health, of course. But yeah, this last while I've felt like I'm 25 again at a crossroads, having a hard time getting clarity on what it is I wanna do at this point. I have so many ideas and a lot of interests, but just no direction. I'm really just paralyzed and it may or may not have taken me until now to fully let that sink in. I'm getting there though, I am. Little epiphanies like I experienced from unplugging go a long way. So we'll just have to see how it all plays out. So that's, I think what I'm kind of thinking for this next phase is building actually like tangible, in-person, real fulfilling relationships and hobbies and things that are just for me. And that will only make my videos maybe better, make my storytelling better, make me more energized, make my presence on my channel, like something that brings me so much joy instead of something that brings me anxiety, you know? I am ready to get back to my normal content, I know this is kind of outside that zone, but I was having the urge to make something a little bit different. And I am kind of excited just to test out and try some different formats, some different styles, implementing some new things that I learn um, into my current videos and just in general, having more fun with it. And if you're going through a bit of a creator crisis of your own, share below, you know, maybe your experience might help somebody. So if you found this video helpful, it would appreciate a lot if you engaged with it somehow. And that's a free way to support my channel. Liking the video by leaving a comment to say hi, especially if you're new or a silent viewer. And then of course, by subscribing and ringing that notification bell so you'll be notified of my upcoming videos. I wish you the best of luck on your creative journey. And with that, I'll close out. I love you. Say it back. Thanks. Love you too. Bye.